Shalom once again from Eretz Israel. This is Torah on Location. I am Avi Ben Mordechai. Coming up on our episode of Torah on Location, we are going to continue our study into Hebrew gematria, or if you will, the language of numbers. Thanks for joining us on our episode of Torah on Location as we take a look at the language of numbers. Now, in our last episode, we were examining the uh, concept of grace and the stone of Israel. Looking back with a little bit of uh, review, just as we press forward into our study, the term grace as it is found in Yohanan or John 1.14, where it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The concept of grace here is a feminine idea, as we discussed on our previous program. This concept of grace in Hebrew, chet, Nun, Chet Nun, has a numeric value of 58. 58. And we can learn uh, quite a bit about this concept of 58, the grace and the Messiah, by turning to uh, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8, where it says that Noah, or Noah, found grace in the sight of Jehovah. When you take Noah, that is nun chet, and you reverse it, you get chet nun. So that means Noah and grace are connected. Since grace is a number and a term that refers to Yeshua HaMashiach, it means that Noah was reflecting the characteristics of Yeshua HaMashiach in his generation. And... Uh, there's a lot more going on in Genesis than meets the eye because he's building an ark. And the term ark in Hebrew in the book of Genesis is tav vet hey. And it's more than just a wooden box. It also carries the meaning and the idea of a word. A word. A divine word. It's the divine word that was spoken to Noah. This is the idea of the ark, and the word is in the ark. But, but I'm getting ahead of myself, because we'll look at that at another program. But it's really interesting. And on our last program, we were looking at the concept of the stone of Israel. The stone of Israel. So, let's take a look at this idea of the stone of Israel. In Psalm 118, verse 22, Psalm 118, verse 22, we learn that the stone of Israel, the Evan of Israel, has a numeric value of 53, because the word stone in Hebrew is Evan, that is Aleph, Vet, Nun, Aleph, Vet, Nun. That's 53. So when you add the stone of Israel, 53, to the grace of Israel, 58, you arrive at 111. And 111 is not so some haphazard number. Oh, not at all. Because 111 is 
the numeric value of the word Aleph in Hebrew. And Aleph is the very first letter of the Hebrew Aleph Beit. Aleph is Aleph Lamed Fe, or Fe Sofit. Aleph. Add it up. The Aleph is 1, the Lamed is 30, and the Fe is 80. 80 plus 30 plus 1. That's 111. So this tells you that the idea of the Aleph at the very beginning of the Torah, okay, that this whole concept is the idea of the Messiah. Now, let's turn that around and I'll show you why that's the case. If you reverse Aleph, Lamed, Fe, reverse the letters, Aleph, Lamed, Fe, and make it Fe, Lamed, Aleph, or Pe, Lamed, Aleph, now you get the word Pele, okay, Fele to be like Niflaot, okay, Niflaot. These are the wonders or the miracles of yud heh vav Yehovah. Fele. Fele is a wonder. It's a miracle. It's a, it's a powerful, uh, divine uh, 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 display of grace and strength from heaven. This is the Fele. And you can see this in the book of Isaiah, Yeshiyahu, chapter 9, and uh, verses 5 and 6. Let's go there together. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty Elohim, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Sar Shalom. I want to focus on this word, wonderful. Wonderful. That's what one of his names is. The name of the Messiah is wonderful. That is, Pe Lamed Aleph. This idea of Pe Lamed Aleph shows up in a number of places in Hebrew Scripture. One such place is the book of Judges, chapter 13. Let's go to Judges chapter 13 in the Torah. Here we learn in verse 18, the Malach, or the angel of Jehovah, said to him, referring to Manoach, Manoach was the father of Shimshon, or Samson, why do you ask my name, seeing it is Pe Lamed Aleph? Ah, very interesting. So the Malach, the angel of Yehovah or Yudevave, is Mashiach. This is the Messiah, because his name in Scripture is called Pe Lamed Aleph. He says, "Why do you ask my name, seeing it is? It's evident. It's self-evident. Take a look. It is Pe Lamed Aleph. That is, it is the Aleph." Pei Lamed Aleph is Aleph Lamed Pei. Pei Lamed Aleph is also Aleph Lamed Pei. Reversed. It is the Aleph. That is, it is 111, which comprises itself of 1, 1, 1, which is the unity that we've been talking about in our programs, the unity of Yehovah. Isn't this beautiful? Only in Hebrew can we see all of these beautiful principles coming to life. Okay? And just to let you know, in the Brit HaChadashah, in the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 21, in the Brit HaChadashah, the Pharisees, the Purushim, the religious leaders of the day, when they hear all the people saying, Hoshiana, Hoshiana, when Mashiach is coming to the gate, that is, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, the Purushim, the Pharisees, say to the disciples, tell everybody to shut up, stop them from saying this. And the writer in the Gospel narrative says, because they saw that his name was Wonderful. You see that? 
That term wonderful does not appear there haphazardly. That term in the gospel narrative in Matthew, that is a reference to this Pelam and Aleph going back to Judges and going back to Genesis. And it appears in a number of other places. And if you really want to pursue this further in your studies, yes, absolutely. Continue your studies on the idea of the Pelam and Aleph root. You'll see all kinds of interesting things going on. So we have here this concept of the Aleph, 111. Okay? Take a look at the letter Aleph in Hebrew. It looks in block writing like two yuds divided by a vav. Two yuds here and here divided by a vav. Well, what is the numeric value of a yud? If you do your study, you'll see it's 10. So, 10 and 10, that's 20, and a vav is 6. 26 is the numeric value. If you look at the breakdown of the structure of the block letter of the Hebrew, Aleph, 26. And 26 equals the divine name yud He vav He. Yud, 10, He, 5, Vav, 6, He, 5. 10, 5, 6, 5. 26. So the Aleph is the reflection of the number 26, which is Messiah. Okay, which is Yehovah. Now something else that you need to see here. Go back to the idea of the stone of Israel. That has the numeric value of 53, right? The stone of Israel. Aleph, Vet, Nun, Evan. Notice something. Within the stone of Israel, built into the stone of Israel, built into that stone, which we know from Psalm 118, verse 22, and Genesis 49, 24, that stone contains two concepts, two ideas. It's built into the word in Hebrew. You won't see it in the English. But in the Hebrew, you will. You have... Evan, Aleph, Vet, which spells what? Av. Av is Father. Oh. And what is the last part of the Evan? Vet, Nun. Vet, Nun. That's Ben. Son. So we have the Father and the Son built into the word in Hebrew, for stone, which is Evan. And that's a 53. Added to grace, 58, equals Aleph, 111, 111, which is this great big number for the word Aleph. When you reverse Aleph around, it's Fele. Fe, Pe, Lamed Aleph, which is the word for the wonderful. Do you see how all of this is playing together? Oh, there's so much more. There's so much more. We're just touching the surface here. Okay? Now, let's go and take a look at the term Elohim. That's coming up next as we continue our research into the gematria or the language of numbers. Okay? Coming up next. Before we get started into this uh, uh, concept of Elohim, which has a numeric value of 86, I want to address one very quick and important concept that ties together Elohim with the ideas that we have already expressed up to this point. The term grace in Hebrew, as we said, with its numeric value of 58, that is Noah, that is grace, the idea of chet nun, 58, right? The same numeric value of grace is in the word aleph zain nun. Aleph zain nun. This is the word in Hebrew, ozen. Ozen is ear, the ear. 
So when Yeshua says, he who has an ear to hear, or ears to hear, let him hear, let him shema. He's referring to the concept of the ear, that is, 58. In other words, grace, which is hen, and an ear, ozen, share the same exact mathematical number, 58. So it tells you that grace and an ear are connected. So what happens? Think about it. What happens when uh, in the garden uh, in Jerusalem, when Yeshua is being uh, betrayed, it says that Kepha picked up a, a sword and he cut off the ear of the servant of the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. He cut off his ear. That is, he took grace away from him. He said, no longer will you have favor. So therefore, without favor, when you get favor, grace cut off, you lose the ability to Shema. You don't ever, ever want to play with these ideas of walking away from listening to the Word of God, listening to the Word of Elohim. If you don't listen to the, to the teachings and the laws of the good book, okay? If you don't listen to the teachings and the laws of the good book, you know what you're doing? You're asking that your ozen, your grace, and your ear get cut off. And you don't want to be cut off from grace. And uh, I've heard many times in Christian circles the concept, you have fallen from grace. You have fallen from grace. Ay, they don't even realize what they're saying. Do you understand this? When you fall from grace, it means you have your ear cut off. 58. That means you're cutting yourself off from Mashiach when you fall from grace. And how do you fall from grace? By not listening to the word. You don't shema. That's why the proverb says that those who do not listen to my Torah, those who do not listen to my Torah, that even their prayer is an abomination. Even their prayer is an abomination when you do not listen to Shema the Torah. Because by not listening to the, 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 the Torah, by not Shema, doing a Shema towards the Torah, what you're doing is you're cutting yourself off with the ears. You're allowing a sword, the double-edged sword of judgment from above, to take away grace from you. That's the true concept of falling from grace. Don't let anybody fool you. The Hebrew will speak for itself. So, in gentleness, in kindness, in love, in purity, in faithfulness, present these things to people. Don't beat them over the head with it. Just be kind, be gentle, express what this truth is, and pray that the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of the Holy One, will reveal and open the eyes of people so their hearts will be soft and tender and be able to hear these things. Okay? All right, with this being said, let us now go into the concept of Elohim. Okay, now the term Elohim, the name Elohim, is a very important word, a title in all of Hebrew Scripture, it shows up over here in the good book, uh, uh, I don't know, something, uh, something around 1,100 times. I, I don't know exactly, but I did a, a count on that once, something like 1,100 something times. Whatever, it's a big number that shows up all the time. This idea of Elohim has a numeric value of 86, okay, of 86. Now, we're only going to start our lesson on this, and we'll pick up on the next program uh, of Torah on Location, uh, the concept of Elohim, and we'll go into greater depth, okay? But this is just a brief introduction. We're getting into this idea of 86, okay? 
And this idea of 86, if you add up 8 and 6, you're going to arrive at a very important number. But first, 86 is Elohim. And how do we spell Elohim? Aleph, Lamed, He, Yud, Mem. Or the Mem Sophit. That's five letters in the term Elohim. Five letters. Now the five letters are very important. Because there's five books of the Torah. That is, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. But a sheet, right, for Genesis, Shemot for Exodus, Vayikra for Leviticus, Bamidbar for Numbers, Devorim for Deuteronomy in Hebrew. Five letters. We'll talk more about this again. This is not the focus of our study here. We're just going to get into some numbers right now. But it's an interesting idea. Five books of the Bible and the term Elohim, which has five letters, each of them comprising the idea of the totality of Yehovah's name. Now, oftentimes you will see, oftentimes you will see the combination of uh, uh, Yehovah Elohim. Uh, it's oftentimes translated into English as the Lord God. Although I don't say Lord God because that has too many connotations which with, uh, with, the, with the idea of, um, of uh, uh, Baal Elohim. In other words, Elohim is Baal or Baal to us. So I don't like to address it that way. So we just simply address it as Yehovah Elohim. So this idea of 86, or Elohim, is an important principle as it is paired with Yehovah. Let's keep in mind that the idea of Elohim from a numeric value, which is 86, is connected to another very important word in Hebrew that also has a numeric value of 86. The word is Hateva. Hateva. That is the imprint or the imprinting or the impressing, the stamping down, the sinking down, the concept of a ring. Yes, like a ring on a finger. It's all connected to this word Hateva. Now, this is spelled in Hebrew He for the definite article He Tet. Vet Ein, Hateva. And that idea, very specific in a definite article, the imprinting, the imprinting, the impression. And this word, Teva, shows up in Scripture many, many, many times. And it's used for the concept of a ring. When you look up the Hebrew word ring in Hebrew, like a ring that you wear on your finger, it's the word Teva. Why? Because a ring is like an impression. It's, an, it's a stamp. It's, a, uh, it's an impression, an imprint. That's what a ring does. Okay? That's how it's connected to this idea of teva. But here's something very, very important. When you add up all of the letters of teva, ha teva, it arrives at 86. So this tells you that Elohim and Hateva, that is Elohim, and the term for the impression or the imprint in Hebrew are both related in terms of function in this physical world. In other words, Elohim is imprinted into the creation. Okay? In Romans 1.20, Paul uh, identifies this idea, and it uh, says, For since the creation of the world, he's referring to the Hebrew Breshit, the book of Breshit, since the works as expressed in the book of Breshit, says Shaul, 
his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as his eternal power and the Godhead, which is the idea of Elohim, so that they are all without excuse. 120 in the book of Romans. So Elohim is expressed, that is the creation of Elohim from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1, where it says, Breshit bara Elohim et ha-shemaim et ha-aretz. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. That's connected to Romans 120. So the idea that Elohim is imprinted, is impressed, is a stamp, is sinking down the name into the creation and causing all of the creation to reflect the term, the concept, the characteristics, the name Elohim. Now, in modern Hebrew, the term teva means nature, nature, like mother nature. But that's a different concept. We're trying to identify that Elohim can be seen in all of creation, ladies and gentlemen, because all of creation is an imprint of the term Elohim, of the name. All of creation reflects Elohim as a stamp as an impression, teva, or ha-teva, for accuracy. Because they both share the value of 86, ha-teva and Elohim. Now we'll talk more about these things on the next program. So stay with us, okay? Lots more to come. I want to thank you for joining us on our program, Torah, on location today. I am Avi ben Mordechai. And uh, this uh, program, The Language of Numbers, will continue as we look at Elohim on the next program in greater depth, which is the numeric value of 86. Continue to join us as you learn more about the language of numbers in Scripture, in Hebrew Scripture. It's referred to as Gematria. Again, I'm Avi ben Mordechai. Shalom from Eretz Israel.